cocaine seizures in Europe have reached record levels. Britain is at the epicenter with the highest number of users. A British government report in 2020 found the cocaine market here is dominated by Albanian gangs whose supply network stretches across British towns and cities. I want to know how a small country on the southeast edge of Europe with a population of just 2.8 million is able to supply Europe's biggest market. To see how widely their cocaine distribution network has spread, I'm starting my investigation with the upper echelons of British society. I was asked to wear a suit tonight because we've been invited to an illegal elite mansion party in central London. We were invited by some members of the Bullingdon Club, which is an elite drinking club at Oxford University that counts David Cameron, Boris Johnson, a slew of prime ministers amongst its ranks. We're pretty certain that there's going to be cocaine there. Londoners consume half a million lines of cocaine a day, twice as much as any other European city, making it a highly lucrative market for cocaine cartels. One floor up is the sex room, apparently. We're not allowed to film up there for obvious reasons. And then here is the one room that we're allowed to film in for the rest of the night. So do you use cocaine? I do indeed. How much of that do you think you'll use in a night? Oh, I can go through maybe two grams for myself. If you were to order cocaine right now, how quickly would it arrive? I'd say 25 minutes. <laughs> you got someone who's on time, eh? Who do you buy it from? I have an Albanian friend that I go to. Albanian? Yes. What's different about him compared to other dealers? Oh, so much more efficient. It's not just wealthy Londoners buying from Albanians. The gangs have expanded their territory so fast, they've had to recruit teenagers to move their product throughout the suburbs. When I was like 13, 14, I wanted to help my mum out with rent sort of thing, but like dragged into it by some Albanians. That's how I got into it at first, really. There's always Albanian gangs about. There's like it's a 24 seven service. You call them up any time of the day, they'll come drop you, just give them the address. It's like McDonald's, but for drugs. As well as selling straight to users, They've also taken over the wholesale distribution of cocaine to the trap houses that local gangs use to cut it and wash it into crack. They've uh, cornered the market at the moment. If you cross them, they're going to use violence. Kidnapping, taken away and not to be returned again, they'll just make it disappear. To understand how Albania became so corrupt, you have to go back to 1997. That was the year that the entire economy collapsed, when it turned out two-thirds of the population had their money invested in pyramid schemes operated by companies supported by the government. In the chaos that followed, criminal gangs took control of several Albanian cities and opened up the military's arsenals to the public. Hundreds of millions in currency was stolen from government treasuries. You look at, at the 90s, you look at the fall of the communism. These are lawless times in all over Eastern Europe, but in particular in a country like Albania that started off in a very bad place uh, too, you know, because communism was a different breed in, in Albania. People were starving in Albania. That's the point where criminals really started getting a grasp of the society because the government was not able to govern at all. After the fall of the communism, the people who were working in the security forces of the state, in the intelligence services, found themselves on their own. Now, what they had was the know-how. They knew exactly how to set up an offshore type of company in Luxembourg, or how to open a bank account in Switzerland. They had contacts in all these places, informants that they built over time. So this is when organized crime started developing on the back of the former communist secret services, they actually started taking over entire economies. We have members of the, of the parliament connected to organized crime. In Albania, unfortunately, it started with the local level, mayors of towns, of cities, connected straight to organized crime, elected because organized crime is backing them, and you have criminals themselves getting elected. It's why you see politicians, you know, on the right of the spectrum, you know, cooperating with the leftists without any, any problem, because in the end you don't have left and right. So 
politics is just a, a cover-up many times for the real business that happens behind the scenes. <laughs>